Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So what do I mean by living on solar for 30 years? How did it all start? And how far has it come? So when I first moved off grid 30 years ago, I wasn't really thinking about electricity. I was going off into the wilderness of the Colorado Rockies and I wanted to be a mountain man and just live a very natural lifestyle. And I hadn't even thought about what I was gonna do for electricity, never entered my mind, not one time. I pulled in a little 17 foot travel trailer to start with, a fully self-contained unit. And I just used a little propane for refrigeration, cooking and heating. Uh, I read by candlelight and that's back when we read for our information. This was before the internet. <laughs> and back then I did subscribe to a couple of off-grid type magazines. One I believe was called Outback Woods and the other one was Real Goods. And I started seeing a lot about solar while I was reading. And the trailer that I started living in wasn't even as big, big as my eight by 16 shop right here. You know, I had five feet of space on the width of my trailer and about the same length. And every so often I'd go out for a supply run for some food and some propane. I was just packing propane in two little five gallon bottles that are typical on a trailer of that size. And that's all I was using and that's all I thought I was gonna need. And then I did, kept going past a little solar shop in that mountain town. And it was a, just a small one, one room operation at the time. And I drove by it probably 20 times before I ever walked in there. And when the owner of that shop asked me, what are you doing for electricity out there? And I said, I'm not doing anything for electricity. I'm reading by candlelight or a lantern. We used kerosene lanterns a little bit there as well. But I was just reading books and magazines for my entertainment. And then he said, well, you could hook up one of these little solar panels, which was a 50 water back then, and you could put you a, you know, a deep cycle battery on the front of that trailer and you could have some electric power. And then I, you know, like the little light went off. And I bought that 150 watt solar panel. It looked something like this. They were a little a longer and more narrow back then. And that 150 watt solar panel, which was used, cost me $250. And just for comparison, nowadays you can pick up a 50 watt panel like that for, you know, under 50 bucks. And I was just talking with a friend the other day and he knows a guy out here on the island selling solar panels for 50 cents a watt right now. Unbelievable. And as soon as I had bought that one solar panel from him, I quickly hooked up one deep cycle lead acid battery similar to this. It was one of the old Sears diehards I put on the trailer. Looked about like that, but they were supposedly pretty good deep cycle batteries back then. And that's when Sears uh, was carrying a lot of good things. I don't even know if Sears is open anywhere anymore. <laughs> Keep dating myself. But that's all I started with. One solar panel, one deep cycle lead acid battery, probably about 100 amp hours, and one simple charge controller that was only about this long and about that wide, just to run between the solar panel and the battery. So when the battery got fully charged, the solar panel would shut off. So now that I was charging a battery, it was, what in the world am I gonna start running off of it? So the first thing was, I went down to Radio Shack and I found a 12 volt, about eight inch color TV and a 12 volt VCR player. And then I could actually hook that up to the battery just with some alligator clips. And it was full basically every day and I could watch a movie. And that was my first electrical power that I used, a little teeny 12 volt TV and a little 12 volt VCR. And man, I thought life had changed for the better right then and there. So besides reading every night, I could throw in a movie. 
So after living like that for a few months and after the snow got out of that part of the country, I started building a cabin. And once I was done building my cabin, I quickly started putting in a, a smaller sol solar system, uh, much larger than I had for the trailer, but still a relatively small system. And the charge controllers back then were pulse width modulation, not the MPPTs that we all use now. And the inverters were modified sine wave, not the pure sine wave that we've all become accustomed to because uh, those things weren't even out. And when they first started coming out, they were outrageously expensive. And after I had my solar system installed in the cabin, I had AC lights, I had DC lights, I had a water pump going. Uh, I was running a little propane for on-demand hot water heat and refrigeration and freezing and even got an eight cubic foot uh, freezer and that was my very first electrical appliance. It was super, super efficient, uh, drew very little power and I just could not believe that I was freezing eight cubic feet off of solar power. So in no time I went from not thinking about power to uh, I've been thinking about it ever since. I still do read occasionally, but it's not by candlelight anymore. And like everybody else, I'm tied into the internet these days and wondering how we ever got by without it. But uh, those were the days. So fast forward 30 years and these panels are 100 watts. And back when I first started, those could be anywhere from four to $500 a piece. And you can pick those up for about 80 bucks a piece now. So. Yeah, it's gotten way better for us, way cheaper, 450 bucks for one of those 30 years ago. You know, that's like saying a couple thousand dollars today. By the time I finished my time in the Rocky Mountains, I don't think I had more than about 450 watts ever tied up to run my little cabin, and I never ran out of power. And for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you're, you'll recognize these appliances, but for those of you that are new, this is a 20 cubic foot refrigerator freezer. This is something I would have never thought about running on solar back in the day. They weren't as efficient and you'd have to build your solar array and battery bank up to such a huge degree that it, it just wasn't worth it. So that's why we stuck with propane. But now 30 years later, running this off of solar, 24 seven, very efficient, draws about 50 to 60 watts normally when it's on. And a five cubic foot freezer, again, all on solar. These were things, except for the freezer that I ran, which was the first thing in the mountains. Uh, and it was efficient, but it cost like 900 bucks back then. So and this thing was under 200. So the good thing is all of these goods have gone down in price. They're way more efficient and solar is way cheaper as well and all of the components are way more efficient. So yeah, now pure sine wave inverters, something this size when I first started or shortly after I first started would have been four or $5,000. Now you can pick one of these up for a few hundred. And then same thing over here, instead of, you know, pulse width modulation for charging, MPPT, for charging, way better. Price keeps coming down, all of these components. Way more reachable for the average person. And you can still find some pulse width modulators out there um, and some modified sine wave. In all the years of me running that modified sine wave inverter, I did have a, a Xantrex, which are were pretty top of the line back in the day. And I only ever found one appliance ever that wouldn't read the uh, modified sine wave. But now with the pure sine wave, which mimics your normal household energy if you're tied to the grid, exactly the same kind of frequency, uh, all devices are running just fine. But yeah, and all the things that I tried, only one thing, and it was a little uh, kind of a massage chair. <laughs> it didn't like pulse, or it didn't like the modified sine wave at all. And I did buy my very first pure sine wave to make that little chair vibrate. And it was a little 200 and 50 watt and I don't even remember what it cost, but it set me back some. And now of course, instead of using lead acid batteries, we're all gravitating over towards the lithium iron phosphate. They're maintenance free, they don't gas. You can put them indoors. I did put my 
lead acids indoors in the mountains because it got so darn cold, but I built a box around them, had to cut a hole in the wall, put a fan in there to exhaust all of the charging gases that would happen uh, when they were boiling and getting up to a full charge. And that's been eliminated now as well as the lifespan of these. I mean, treated right, you know, shouldn't be a problem to get 20 years out of these compared to the lead acid. I The best I ever got, which was amazing, I did get 10 years out of some Trojan L16s, which were top of the line lead acid back then. And the price keeps coming down on everything. I keep seeing 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries out, out there now, well under $200 and they keep dropping. So uh, yeah, solar panels are cheaper. All the various components are way cheaper than they were 30 years ago. Everything works better. You can have all these automated systems. Once you, once you set up your parameters, it's kind of a plug and play and you don't have to worry about it too much. Even when I was out of town for the past few weeks, you know, these systems never missed a beat. It's not like I have to run around and do anything to them at all. They're just working perfectly. So I hope that gives some of you guys an idea about solar. If you've been thinking about going to solar, you don't have to start big. You don't have to do your whole house. You can start slowly. It's a good time. And for those of you that have been following the channel for a long time, uh, and so many of you are living on solar as well. We all know things have changed m much, much uh, for the benefit of all. So there's a lot more we can talk about it and a lot more we shall in time. And everybody, thanks for always is tuning in. And keep those suggestions coming in of some things you'd like to see on the off-grid living, off-grid lifestyle, solar, water harvesting, all of those things. I'm gonna get right back onto regular content now. Feeling pretty good, glad to be here, and glad to be on solar. All right, you guys, aloha, and I'll catch you on the next one. And just as a little teaser, I'm gonna go in here today. I'm a little behind on some things. I'm gonna charge up several mismatched lithium iron phosphate batteries off of the one system charging everything in there. So that'll be a good experiment. All right, <laughs> had to tease you a little bit. Beautiful day. Uh, yeah, don't miss a beat on solar. Never have. Just don't read as many books, probably. <laughs>